boys and girls. It's me, Mrs. Meyer, and today I'm going to read some animal books. Ready? I have four different books to read today. So, the first one is Clip Clop. wants a ride? asked Mr. Horse. Me please, says Cat. And this you can help me. Ready? It goes clip, clop, clippity, clop. I want to ride too, please, Mr. Horse's dog. Up you get, says Mr. Horse. Ready? Together. Clip, clop, clippity, clop. Ride too, please, Mr. Horse, says Pig. Up you get, says Mr. Horse. Ready? Together. Clip, clop, clippity, clop. Don't leave me behind, says Duck. Up you get, says Mr. Horse. Can you go a little bit faster, Mr. Horse, asks Cat and Dog and Pig and Duck. Of course I can, says Mr. Horse, but make sure you hold on tight. All right, ready? It goes faster. Clippity clop, faster, faster, clippity clop, faster, faster. Look at him just going. Ready? Clippity clop, clippity clop. They're holding on. Squeal cat and dog and pig and duck. Mr. Horse gets to a halt. A halt is a stop. And cat and dog and pig and duck fly through the air. And land in a haystack. Plop, plop, ploppity, plop. Look, they're in the haystack. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dearie me, says worried Mr. Horse. Again, cried cat and dog and pig and duck. Up you get, laughs Mr. Horse. And cat and dog and pig and duck go riding off again. Clip, clop. Clippity-clop. With best of friends. The end. Very cool. Okay, now I'm going to read another one. This is Click Clack Moo. Cows that type. Farmer Brown has a problem. His cows like to type. All day long he hears Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack, moo. At first, he couldn't believe his ears. Cow is that typed impossible. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack, moo. Then he couldn't believe his eyes. So this is what the cow said to the farmer. Dear Farmer Brown, the barn is very cold at night. We'd like some electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. It was bad enough the cows had found the old typewriter in the barn. Now they wanted electric blankets? No way, says Farmer Brown. No electric blankets. So the cows went on strike. They left a note on the barn door. Sorry, we are closed. No milk today. No milk today, cried Farmer Brown. In the background, he could hear the cows busy at work. Click, clack, moo. Click, clack, moo. Clickety, clack, moo. The next day, he got another note. Dear Farmer Brown, the hens are cold too. They like electric blankets. Sincerely, the cows. The cows were growing impatient with the farmer. They left a new note on the barn door. 
Clothes, no milk, no eggs. No eggs, cried Farmer Brown in the background. He heard them click, clack, moo, click, clack, moo, clickety, clack, moo. Cows that type, hens on strike. Who ever heard such a thing? How can I run a farm with no milk and no eggs? Farmer Brown was furious. So he was not happy. Farmer Brown got on his own typewriter. Dear cows and hens, there will be no electric blankets. You are cows and hens. I demand milk and eggs. Sincerely, Farmer Brown. Duck was a natural party, so he brought the ultimatum to the cows. The cows held an emergency meeting. All the animals gathered around the barn to scoop, but none of them could understand moo. All night long, Farmer Brown waited for the answer. Duck knocked at the door. Then early the next morning, he handed Farmer Brown the note. Dear Farmer Brown, we will exchange our typewriter for electric blankets. Leave them outside the barn door and we will send Duck over with the typewriter. Sincerely, the cows. Farmer Brown decided this was a good deal. He left the blankets next to the barn door and waited for the duck to come with the typewriter. The next morning he got a note. Dear Farmer Brown, the pond is quite boring. We like a diving board. Sincerely, the ducks. Click, clack, quack. Click, clack, quack. Clickety, clack, quack. So now the ducks have the typewriter. Oh, and look, did they get their diving board? Yep. <laughs> okay, this is called a silly snowy day. Ho oh, hum, yawned Mr. Tortoise. Winter is here. So it is, yawned Mrs. Tortoise. Come on, Shelly, it's time for bed. But I don't feel sleepy yet, said Shelly. Ridiculous, cried Mr. Tortoise. All tortoises go to sleep for winter. Why, asked Shelly. Because it's too cold outside and there's no food. But I don't want to go to sleep, said Shelly. I want to see what winter is like. Ridiculous, cried Mr. and Mrs. Tortoise together. Who ever heard of a tortoise outside in winter? Soon Mr. Tortoise began to snore. And not, not long after that, Mrs. Tortoise began to snore. And not long after that, Shelly left her warm bed of leaves and out she went through a hole in the shed to see what winter was like. Outside the shed, Shelly blinked. There was snow and ice everywhere, even on the duck pond and the hill. As she went along, a duck spotted her. A tortoise out in winter? Quacked the duck. Ridiculous. No, it isn't, said Shelly. Oh, no? Then let's see you break through the ice to get food like I can. Ha, quack, ha, ha. That's right, thought Shelly. I can't do that. I don't have a beak. As Shelly began to walk up the hill, she met a dog. A tortoise out in winter, barked the dog. Ridiculous. No, it isn't, said Shelly, feeling a little cross. Oh, no? Then let's see you, let's see you keep warm by running around like I can. Ha, ha, woof, woof, ha, ha, ha. He's right, thought Shelly sadly. I can't do that either. The dog ran off after the cat, but she, the cat climbed up the tree. She looked down at Shelly. A tortoise out in winter, meowed the cat. Ridiculous. No, it isn't, said Shelly, even more crossed. Oh, no. Then let's see you run into a nice warm house as quickly as I can. Ha ha, meow, ha ha. She's right, thought Shelly, shivering with cold. I can't run like a dog or a cat. I'm just too slow. The cat raced off into her house before the dog could catch her, and Shelly went towards the top of the hill where she met a bird. 
A tortoise out in winter? Chirped the bird. Ridiculous. No, it isn't, snapped Shelly. Oh, no? Then let's see you fly home and cuddle up with your family like I can. Ha, huh, cheep, ha. Huh. Of course I can't fly, thought Shelly. I can't even hop. Shelly felt cold and miserable. She remembered her warm, cozy bed and a tear went down her cheek. They're all right, she thought. A tortoise out in winter is ridiculous. She was so sad she didn't notice the big patch of ice ahead and she slipped on it. Shelly fell over backwards and began to slide down the hill. Faster and faster she went. Faster than a dog could run, faster than a cat, until suddenly she hit a bump and flew into the air like a bird. Whee! With a thump, Shelly landed on the icy duck pond and slid towards the hole and shed. But it was all covered up with ice. Ha ah, quack! What did I say? cried the duck as she slid by him. Where's your beak to break the ice with? I don't have a beak, thought Shelly. But I do have a shell. And tucking her head inside it, she broke through the ice into the shed and home. Hearing all that noise, Mrs. Tortoise woke up. You haven't been out long, have you, Shelly? She asked. A tortoise out in winter, she said, snuggling into her bed. And before she could say ridiculous, she was fast asleep. Well, the snow. The end. All right, I have one more book for you guys. And it is called When the Fly Flew In. In a quiet room, a dreaming dog wagged his tail, a fuzzy cat snoozed, a plump hamster napped in a shoe, and a sleepy parakeet whistled on the bedpost. I can't clean my room, a child whispered to his mother. All the animals are sleeping. I'll clean it later. Look at his messy room. When a fly flew in, the dog opened an eye, wiggled as a whisker, then leaped up to catch it. See the fly? It's right there. The fly turned left and the dog's tail sent a dozen dinosaurs sailing. The fly turned right and the dog's tail swept off a mountain of muddy pants and crusty socks. Ooh. The fly turned in circles and the dog's tail pushed off a pile of moldy old apple cores and banana peels but the fly was always one turn ahead of the dog. Yuck. That does not sound like a clean room. When the fly buzzed by the cat, the cat went after it. The fly zigzagged, the cat zigzagged. The fly zigzagged, the cat zigzagged. And they were just going like this. But the fly was always a zig or a zag ahead of the dust mop cat. When the fly stopped to nibble on a cookie crumb in the closet, the hamster took a notice. The hamster didn't care about flies, but he did care about cookies. He shooed the fly away and ate the crumb of the closet. Then the raisin on the radio. Even the popcorn inside a party hat. But the fly always stayed one nibble ahead of the hamster. When the fly zipped around the ceiling, the parakeet watched closely because watching flies is a bird's business but she couldn't watch any longer. Zoom, she swooped into a corner full of cobwebs. Zap, she flapped behind the curtains thick with more webs. 
The parakeet gobbled up the spider and her webs trailed from her wings like kite strings, but the fly was always one web ahead of her. There's the spider web. In a quiet room, a dog twitched his tail as he dreamed about a fly. A cat curled up her coat, licked clean. A hamster settled down for a second nap. A wary parakeet flopped her feathers. The fly flew out. So that's the clean room. And the room was clean. The end. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining me with stories today. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!